York is an iconic ancient city occupying an honored place on most visitors must do list. At night its deep rooted history seems to come alive more so than in daylight. I live 200 miles away but York is within easy reach by train, especially by taking advantage of advance first-class tickets, where you get a free meal on the journey, but I am tied to certain trains. My train home was not until seven, but after visiting the National Railway Museum on the spur of the moment and to pass the time, without any preparation whatsoever, I photographed the city at night. Most photographs were taken between 5 and 6.30 p.m., just as the streets were emptying of shoppers and tourists looking for a bed for the night. I prefaced the shoot with a sunset stroll along the city's ancient walls. Gear comprised the Olympus EM1 Mark II and the fabulous 12 to 100 Pro lens. Nothing else. Both have image stabilizers that work together, so the absence of a tripod did not matter. The maximum aperture of the lens, although constant, is f4. But as metering systems don't recognize black, I underexpose everything by minus 1.7 EV on program, effectively giving me nearly two extra stops for hand holding, and it worked. Most shutter speeds ended up at around a fifth of a second, and I have tried this technique in London, so I was confident. The other important part of my technique might seem odd. In darkened streets still busy with people, I felt mindful about using the viewfinder. Instead, I composed my shots using the screen, tilted at an angle so that I was looking down. To the bystander, it looked as if I was making adjustments to the camera, composing pictures, not taking them. Whatever your technique, the photographer is faced with a huge dynamic range from dark streets, almost imperceptible to the human eye, to bright shop windows, brilliantly illuminated by artificial light. No camera can handle this without a bit of help. Faced with underexposed shadows and overexposed highlights in a single shot, I set the camera controls that allowed flexibility in post-production for corrections. I spot meter using live view, but here using the screen. Normally I use the viewfinder. I save to raw, leave the white balance on the daylight preset, but bump the ISO up to 400 from my preferred 200 setting. Only experience will guide the photographer in knowing which part of the image to spot meter from. There is no magic number or formula. The live view preview is a guide and what you end up with prior to Lightroom adjustments looks totally different. It's blacked out shadows and burnt out highlights containing the invisible magic for later. King Street leading down to the river from the shopping centre is quieter, where after my city walls walk I caught the sunset. I spot metered near the sunset, allowing slight overexposure permitting easier correction to the darker areas later in Lightroom. By reducing highlights in Lightroom, the sunset hues are restored and lightening shadows brings back detail to the street. I have also increased clarity and vibrance to add punch and tweet contrast too. I find increasing saturation artificial. Vibrance is subtler.
I reduced exposure by only a third of stop using exposure compensation. But when it was completely dark, a reduction of one and two thirds stops was necessary to preserve a dark sky, even with spot metering. The overriding requirement was to preserve the shop window highlights as much as possible, whilst keeping some detail in the dark areas. Increasing shadows too much in post-production risks noise. Therefore, I tend to favour getting the highlights right at the expense of shadows. By the way, notice that I catalogue my images fully and correctly, which makes finding them with a search engine much quicker. Olympus Viewer software is marvellous here, very quick and easy. Incidentally, the LRM number refers to the relevant Ordnance Survey Land Ranger map, and ORF means Olympus RAW File. With this image of the shambles, I have been ruthless with the Lightroom sliders. The histogram might give you a heart attack, but the technique with the sliders is trial and error, assisted by my eyes and that mysterious and private world between my ears. The beauty is that if it doesn't work, I try again, probably after a heavy drink. And it is for this reason I do not use filters, because whatever they do, you are stuck with it. And I do keep changing my mind. The Lightroom settings for the next image are similar, if not identical. I have tweaked white balance, reducing warmth after finding none of the presets suitable. Again, achieved by trial and error. Notice I have increased the exposure and then slammed on the brakes by reducing drastically highlights and whites. Increasing exposure slightly in post-production retains highlight information, allowing more wriggle room for restoring shadow detail. I could of course resort to HDR, but that would blur people. I am tempted to increase contrast. This must be done carefully. Overuse will muck everything up. With this last shot of Petergate, I have tweaked the shadows a bit more. This makes the minster visible, more visible and clearer than reality. Wonky buildings are corrected in Lightroom or Photoshop, no particular preference, but once in Photoshop I create a JPEG or TIFF file depending on requirements. I shoot everything in 4x3 ratio and crop to 16x9 for YouTube default ratio. I can see images for both formats simultaneously. Also, I resize for YouTube down to 1400 pixels width. This seems to help when making an MP4 file for uploading. I'm not suggesting that this is the only way to take and adjust nighttime images, but if there is a nugget of information that strikes a sympathetic chord, then mould it into your own style. Otherwise, I allow my images to remain as testament to my way of working, right or wrong. On the return journey, I celebrated the success of the double shoot with wine courtesy of London and Northeastern Railway. As to whether I could find St Pancras Station after arriving at King's Cross was another story.